Boy, I love their energy. This morning, our scripture reading is from Luke chapter 10, verses 1 through 11 and 16 through 20. Lord Jesus now chose 72 other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places he planned to visit. These were his instructions to them. A harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. Now go, and remember that I am sending you out as lambs among wolves. Don't take any money with you, nor a traveler's bag, nor an extra pair of sandals. And don't stop to greet anyone on the road. Whenever you enter someone's home, first say, may God's peace be on this house. If those who live there are peaceful, the blessing will stand. If they are not, the blessing will return to you. Don't move around from home to home. Stay in one place, eating and drinking what they provide. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve their pay. If you enter a town and it welcomes you, eat whatever is set before you. Heal the sick and tell them the kingdom of God is near you now. If the town refuses to welcome you, go out into its street and say, wipe even the dust of your town from our feet to show that you have abandoned you to your fate. And know this, the kingdom of God is near. Then he said to his disciples, anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me. And anyone who rejects you is rejecting me. And anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. When the two disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Yes, he told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look. I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. And you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. Don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. I went up onto the internet to look for movie titles that had numbers in them. So, for example, I came up with the Magnificent Seven. And many of us are old enough to, to remember the original Magnificent Seven with Yul Brunner and uh, some of the other stars like Charles Coulson. And, and uh, it was a great movie. And recently, there was another Magnificent Seven movie put out, Denzel Washington and Chris Pratt star in that one. Both of these movies of the Magnificent Seven had a mission. Seven people, some were gunslingers, some had different uh, types of livings that they came from, had a mission to defend a town or to help the people of the town take their town back. So in the original town, or original Magnificent Seven, those seven helped uh, some Mexican villagers take back their town. And then the Magnificent Seven that just came out within the past few months, the mission was to help a town there uh, defend itself against people who were exploiting the mine, the gold, and gold mine that was around. So some movies with a number in their title. And of course, we also know about the three musketeers, all for one and one for all. Here was a movie that actually ended up with four musketeers, and they too had a mission. They were to defeat um, people who are trying to seize the French throne and engulf Europe in war. These movies are just a few examples of movies that had numbers in their titles and had missions to accomplish. This scripture has a good enough plot that it could have been made into a movie. And if it was given a title, maybe we could have named it The 72. 72. For 72 disciples have been given a mission by Jesus. They're sent out in pairs to places that he planned to visit. 
Now, they're told up front that their mission is going to be challenging. He tells them that they are being sent out as lambs among wolves. I wonder if um, in any of your experiences with clergy, if any of you have been told when you've been asked to take on a mission or a church responsibility that you're, we're gonna, you were going to be sent out as lambs among wolves. I don't think I told any of you that because I didn't think that would be a good selling point. Certainly, Jesus tells these 72 that. You can only imagine the feeling that they must have had in the pit of their stomachs when they're told what might happen to them. Because they're being told that they may not receive a friendly reception. Here they are going out into the villages to share God's good news, and they may not receive a friendly reception. They're also told that they are not to take any money says, don't take any money with you, nor a traveler's bag, nor an extra pair of sandals. Told to just go. I may have told you this before, but in June, I went on a Blue Damn New River cruise. And it was a great experience. We started out in Budapest, and we were to continue along the river until we got to Passau, Germany, and then we would take a bus up to Prague in the Czech Republic. Beautiful cities all around. Before I went in preparation, I purchased some foreign money from my bank because we're going to be using foreign money in any place that we went to. So when we were in Hungary, I needed to have some for rents, they were called, for, for rents. We were only going to be there for a day, but just in case we wanted to have lunch or something, we needed their currency. They wouldn't accept other currencies, only the for rent. And then when we were in Austria and Germany and at the airport in Switzerland, we needed the euro because that's what they would take. They wouldn't take my American currency. They wanted to take the euro. Then when we got to the Czech Republic, we needed the Karuna because, again, they wouldn't take other money. They would only take the Karuna. So we had to have these different monies for our travels. On top of that, because I hope to use plastic from time to time, I had to let the banks know about my credit card and my ATM that I'd be in a foreign land so that if I used those cards, they would not be rejected. So I had to let them know that. So when it came to the use of money on my travels, I needed to be prepared. Note what Jesus tells the 72 as they begin to travel. Don't take any money with you. Don't take anything with you. They're going to be relying upon God and the hospitality of strangers. They weren't even to stop and greet people. In other words, he's saying to them, Go, don't get distracted, just Go. And then Jesus tells them their mission. And it really is primarily two parts. One is that they were to bring healing to people. And secondly, they were to share the good news of the kingdom of God with you. Let people know God's love through actions. Now, this is quite a mission. There is no special training. There's no workshop that they go ahead of time on how to evangelize. There's no seminar that they go to that can tell them how to heal people. It simply is just go and do these things that I've asked of you. Let me ask you this. Have you ever gone door to door to try to sell something? Ever had that experience? You know, probably when you were younger, you may have had that experience. I believe that kids today have it pretty easy when they're selling stuff for school or for scouts or for church or whatever. I think they have it pretty easy. I mean, think about the Girl Scouts and Girl Scout cookies. 
doesn't want to buy Girl Scout cookies, right? And the Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts selling popcorn. Who doesn't want to buy popcorn? Free ad there. And then I think of uh, school choirs selling pizzas. Who doesn't want to buy pizza? My neighbor boys play football. So uh, for their uh, organization to raise funds for football, they sell candy bars from a local candy shop. Who doesn't want to buy candy bars? When I was a Cub Scout, do you know what I had to sell door to door? Light bulbs. Let me ask you. Yeah, who doesn't want to buy light bulbs? Nobody. <laughs> that was my experience. Nobody wants to buy light bulbs. Well, probably harder than selling light bulbs door to door is sharing one's faith. Think about it. What do you do if a couple of Mormons or a couple of Jehovah Witnesses coming down the street? Many of us lock the doors, go into hiding, pretend we're not home, or we answer the door, we say, no, thank you, and quickly get rid of them as quickly as we can. We don't want to hear what they have to say about their faith. That sharing their faith is the mission that the 72 sent out by Jesus, have to do. Now, why did Jesus send them on this mission? It was because the harvest is... Now, uh, one of the ministries that I'm involved in is St. Joe's Food Pantry. And I have the uh, pleasure of serving on the produce line. So I get to hand out fruit and vegetables to people. Earlier in the summer, there was an abundance of blueberries and strawberries and raspberries that I was able to hand out to people. It was great. Now, this time of year, there's different crops to hand out. So right now at the food pantry, we're handing out lots of bell peppers. And we're handing out lots of... Uh, uh, hot peppers as well. And these are all homegrown. And we're handing out homegrown squash and eggplant. And of course, it's a great harvest time for apples as well. So that's what we have for our harvest. Jesus was interested in harvesting people because he saw that there were many people who were needing to know God's love. They were ripe to experience God's good news and to experience God's love. And the 72 out into this month, we American Baptists have our world mission offering. It's a wonderful offering. It's always an off offering that I've always appreciated because it supports our missionaries overseas as well as the missions that they are on. For example, we use it to help missionaries in Cuba and in Mexico and the Dominican Republic, missions that aren't that far away from us. But it's also used in missions on the other side of the world. It's used for places like Africa and Bulgaria and the Philippines. Next year, there will be some missionaries that served as pastor and spouse in our own community. John and Amanda Good, who served First Baptist Church in Appleton, hope to start next fall as missionaries to Hungary. So I'm looking forward to see how the mission offering will encourage them in their endeavors. And it may be that you might want to consider supporting them as they raise their funds for their missions. John and Amanda will be busy uh, doing various things. For example, John's going to help pastors in that area with theological education, as well as helping them to plant churches. And Amanda is going to be able to go into the public schools to teach music and to teach English 
and to share the good news. This is something new. They weren't able to do this in Hungary until recently. Great opportunity. So the World Mission Offering supports God's broader mission field. However, they are not the only ones who are sent into a mission field to share God's love. You and I are also sent to share God's good news through our actions and our words. We are sent to heal through acts of caring and acts of mercy and acts of helping. We are sent to share the good news of God's love that his kingdom is are sent by Jesus. Now, there is an element of the story that we need to take notice of. The mission of Jesus wasn't his alone. The mission of Jesus involved others. He shared it with his disciples, all 72 it wasn't a mission just for Jesus. It wasn't a mission just for Peter, James, and John. It wasn't a mission just for the 12 apostles. Likewise, the church's mission goes beyond the pastor, goes beyond the committees, goes beyond the ministry council, goes to every single person. Note also that Jesus didn't ask for volunteers. He didn't say, okay, I have something for you to do. Now I want you, to, if, you're, if you're willing to volunteer, I want you to raise your hand. He didn't wait for that. Rather, he sent them all out. This was part of what it meant to be. He sends us all out to proclaim the good news. Well, how many people are participants in the life of Whiting Community Baptist Church? 40, 50, 60, 70? Whatever the number is, all are sent to heal. Claim that the kingdom of God is Now, you might do that from your home. Maybe that you can't get around very well, you're not very mobile, but you can do that from your home. I'll tell you about a friend of mine. Um, she's actually a friend by association. She was a friend's of, friend of Denise's, and that's how I got to know her, and she got to be my friend. For over four years, she has been battling cancer. It's been a struggle. She's been battling it. She can't get around very well. She, she's not very mobile. She's pretty much is at pretty much homebound. But she has a mission to send out encouragement cards to people. She could use the most encouragement of anybody, sends out encouragement cards to others. It's hard to believe, but it's been almost three and a half years since the I still Get in. That one this past week. And I can't tell you how much that means to me. That she and almost anybody could do. You have your other missions community table, uh, helping others in other ways. A matter of prayer to ask what God wants you to do to help others and to make a difference in someone's life. Point is, we are all sent to share God's love in word. There was another movie out not all that long ago that had a number in its title. It was called The 33. 
This was a movie about a gold and copper mine collapse in Chile in 2010. So it's a true story. This collapse of this mine trapped 33 men underground for 69 days. Imagine that. Over two months trapped underground. I believe it was a couple of weeks before they even had any light come through. How challenging that was. But finally they got light through and finally they were able to drop supplies. But it still took 69 days to get them out of that mine. Now, for those 69, their mission during that time alive, have hope, to not give up when the challenges were overwhelming and they weren't sure they were going to be able. Like the 33 and the 72 have a mission. Great harvest out there and Jesus says we're to share the good news with them about the kingdom of God and to heal in ways that we're able to bring healing. We will face challenging obstacles until we go our mission. 72 went out and they came back with great joy. You and I experience the same carry out the mission that God sends us out on. 